It is nearing the end of the 21st century, and despite phenomenal gains in technology, humanity is still plagued by infectious disease. In fact, things are much worse than ever before. Many new strains of infection and disease began to appear in the late 20th century that were highly resistant to conventional medicine. These infections manifested themselves as normal symptoms of common ailments, but they quickly multiplied and changed. A common cold or a simple scratch could become life-threatening in a matter of hours. These superbugs were responsible for many deaths as the medical profession struggled to find a cure. New drugs were pressed into service, but the superbugs mutated faster than medical science could advance. Many of these treatments had terrible side effects that were almost as bad as the disease itself. Over the years, the situation continued to get worse. Things looked grim as disease began to spread and the fatality rate climbed. People were becoming desperate. It was time for a different approach. The military and space program had been working on a matter-reducing field that would make transportation of bulky loads many times easier. Dr. Avery J. DeStefano, the Nobel Prize winning microbiologist, proposed a radical twist to this idea that could possibly provide a solution. The year is now 2094, and the latest weapon in the battle to rid mankind of this microbial threat is the might force in what is being called Operation Internal Front. The technology for this new strategy was developed by the military at MIST-MD, or the Military Institute of Science and Technology Medical Division, otherwise known as the Academy. This program centers around the ability to shrink a human pilot in a specially designed ship to the size of a pinhead. The ship is composed of an organic compound that is biochemically matched to the patient to prevent rejection and attack by the body's own defenses. The ship and pilot are then transported into the body where it attacks the disease organisms directly with specially designed bioweapons. This process is known as MITE, or Microbiological Internal Tactical Engagement. The first trials of this highly controversial program were plagued with failure and several test pilots made the ultimate sacrifice. It took several years of frantic experimentation to stabilize the process. Eventually, the kinks in the technology were worked out and selection and training of a squadron of the military's top pilots began in earnest. Operation Internal Front has just begun and field operations at the Academy Hospital on actual patients is underway. This is the final hurdle before widespread application of this discovery signals the start of the worldwide offensive against the superbugs. You have just completed your basic training as a Might Force pilot, and your orders have been issued directing you to report to Commodore J.T. Ridley at the Academy for active duty. You will be among the first to beat back this insidious threat and blaze a trail for others to follow in the next battle to save humanity. Hey there, everybody. It's KYN, and I welcome you all to another one of my Let's Plays. So yes, I am very happy to be debuting another Let's Play of another game. And uh, yeah, this is quite an obscure one at that. And um, quite honestly, um, in the last few days or so, yeah, I was kind of getting the in uh, itchling to uh, do another Let's Play. Just, just because I was kind of missing it, and I was like, yeah, I really would love to get back into Let's Playing and everything. And um, yeah, so I decided to uh, let's play this game that you see here. It is nearing the end of oh. the 21st century, and despite phenomenal games... Oh, I didn't realize that they go to the intro again like that. Yeah, because I don't think I ever waited long enough Yeah, after that has happened. Uh, but anyway, let me go ahead and press uh, begin new game here, uh, just so that doesn't happen. But anyway, um, yes, this is a new game that, you, that I'm let's playing that you see here. It's called Body Works Voyager uh, Missions in Anatomy. So it's pretty much all... Uh, focuses on uh, human anatomy, and um, this is actually a game where it takes like a hybrid approach. Where, um, yeah, um, later on, uh, you you answer medical questions, yeah, before you take on the real missions and everything, which basically has you uh, being transported into the patient, and uh, you basically fight microbes and germs along the way, yeah, to help the basically the patient get back to um, to being healthy and everything, and. Yeah, this was one of the games that I grew up with, yeah, back when I was very little. So I was really only in elementary during that time. And um, I was remembering this game, and I was like, oh yeah, I remember how much fun this was, yeah, back when I was little. And I still find joy in it from time to time. Uh, but it's been quite a while since I last played the game, so... Um, 
yeah, I played it sometime, yeah, like past, uh, like post college and everything. Yeah, from, um, I believe last decade. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been quite a while since I played it, though. Uh, but, yeah, um, occasionally I just remember this and, yeah, just remember how much fun it was, yeah, back when I was little. And the kicks that I get from it, yeah, whenever I play it again from time to time. Um, but yes, this was definitely one of the earliest games that I played, yeah, back in my early childhood. And, um, it's so funny because, like, over the past weekend when my brother visited, uh, me and my parents, um, yeah, we were just reminiscing on some games that we, um, grew up and played. And this happened to be one of them because, um, uh, my brother was asking me what the name of this game was because he couldn't re remember. Yeah, I guess he's kind of, uh, at the, at the age where, um, <laughs> he's starting to, like, forget a lot of things and, um, I think um, he has always um, told me that I've been really good at remembering names of games that we played. So, yeah, I just happened to... Um, uh, it was a coincidence because, like, uh, I just recently fired up this game on my machine. And I was like... And I told my brother, it's so funny that you mentioned that game because, like... Um, or, like, we're describing that game because um, I just recently got it working again on my machine. So, um, <laughs> so I uh, happily told him the name of it. And, um, yeah, so he proceeded to look it up on his phone and everything, and, yeah, he found, um, a video footage of it. Um, so, yes, uh, Bodyworks Voyager, uh, Missions in Anatomy, yes, uh, this was definitely, uh, so much fun, yeah, playing, uh, when I was little and everything, and, yeah, this was definitely where I got a lot of my medical knowledge, yeah, even though I am not a doctor or have pursued a field, uh, career in that field or whatever, yeah, I am a math person, <laughs> So, um, yeah, my talents lie with that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, even with this, um, with the whole focus on medical science and anatomy and everything, yeah, this is still a lot of fun. Um, although, quite honestly, it does get quite repetitive, yeah, after you, um, seen a couple of, like, um, uh, missions and actions and everything. So, um, yeah, just be aware of that. And, uh, it is somewhat of a long game as well, because, um, yeah, there's plenty of missions to get through, and, um, uh, and it also depends on like whether you uh, are successful in passing the missions and whatnot. Yeah, because if you aren't, then you have to like do the mission all over again, and you even have to go through the um, process of answering questions again and whatnot. And um, uh, basically, from what I understand, um, there's basically three rounds, uh, three different like um, difficulties in which you can play through this. Uh, um, but uh, what I don't know is like how many rounds. Uh, what what determines how many rounds you do? Um, because I've always played it such that like the uh, difficulty level of the questions yeah matches the difficulty of the arcade um style that you do afterwards. And if you do that, yeah, you start at the lowest yeah for each of them. Yeah, then you basically go through three different um rounds. So like um yeah, you play through all sixty missions in each difficulty. So that basically makes it makes it one hundred eighty, but. All the missions are the same every time, though. So, um, I again, I do not know what determines how many like different rounds of sixty missions that you do. Um, I'm guessing it it um, it's dependent on like uh, the um, the um, difficulty of the questions that you do. But I have no idea, though. Yeah, I've never like tried it. Yeah, where I mix and match the um, difficulties of the questions versus the um, Difficulty of the uh, arcade missions. Uh, but anyway, yes. Uh, I think for the purposes of this Let's Play, though, I'm just going to do uh, both the difficulty of the questions and the difficulty of the arcade style uh, at the highest level. So anyway, yes, let's go ahead and get started now. Um, I know it was pretty brief, and I didn't like really like give a good overview of the um, game, to be honest. But well, yeah, uh, you'll, um, you'll see what, what happens yeah, as we go along here. By the way. Um, so here, yeah, just going to provide my name here. Um, it's K Y N. That, at least that's why I go by, yeah, on the Lemmings forums, yeah, which is what I'm a part of, yeah. Um, um, pretty much everyone knows me by this username, yeah, on YouTube, and also on the Lemmings forums and stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that here as well. And then, yeah, here uh, after you uh, enter your name, yeah, then it asks you what level of difficulty would you like the quizzes to be at. And again, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and do it at the highest level, which is advanced here. Um, yeah, basically, from what I understand, the difficulty level determines how many questions you need to answer before you go into the arcade style um, uh, play uh, playthrough. 
So, um, so before a beginner, you only do one, intermediate, two questions, and then finally advanced three. So I'm going to go ahead and do advanced here. And then finally, after you do that, yeah, then it asks you what level of difficulty do you wish to play the arcade sequences at. And so here you can think uh, Cadet as easy, Veteran as medium, and Top Gun as hard. And again, yeah, just like I mentioned before, I'm going to also do this as the high, at the highest difficulty as well, which is Top Gun. Welcome to Mission Control, Ensign. Essentially, you can think of that as like services. Yeah, basically flying ships uh, around a medical hospital and whatnot. So, you know, you can think of them as like ambulances and whatnot. And yeah, so here we are at the main screen of the game here. And um, yeah, just the quick crash uh, overview. So here, awards and merit. Yeah, this is where you can see uh, what rank you are and what medals you have earned, if any. So basically, uh, as the game goes along, yeah, if you do pretty well in the arcade style um, uh, playthrough, yeah, then you can essentially earn medals, yeah, as you go along. And now, from what I understand though, the medals do not Im impact your uh, gameplay in any way. Yeah, other than the fact that it's like, oh yeah, look at me, I've um, reached the rank of uh, lieutenant and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of like game style of gameplay and everything, it doesn't like um, make any missions easier and whatnot, for example. Yeah, or you're not given any special treatment, such as like a special weapon which you can use against the microbes, yeah, slash germs. So yeah, so pretty much, if anything, the medals are just pretty much for like, you know, bragging rights, <laughs> if you could call them that. And uh, just to, as a fancy display of your exemplary uh, playstyle. And then, so yeah, here as you can see, it this is the pilot load that you chose, yeah, which is Top Gun. And then quiz load that you chose, Advanced. And then first tour number one. And I guess you can think of the tour number here as the um, as the uh, level number. Yeah, and as I mentioned before, there are six, 60 different missions in total throughout the entire game. So yes, it is somewhat of a long game. But uh, how long you uh, the game actually is depends on, like, for example, whether you're successful in your arcade playstyle and whatnot. And... Um, so, because if there are missions that you constantly keep failing and everything, yeah, then that can definitely drag out the game. But um, if you are successful on your first try each time and everything, yeah, then it's not pretty long at all. Yeah, as long as you're able to, like, um, like uh, pass each time and also uh, not spend too long on the questions either. Um, but, um, yeah, um, the questions can be, like, a little difficult at times too. But um, luckily, you're not on your own here because, um, yeah, there is some help provided. Yeah, because you are pretty much at the medical database each time, and you can just look up different, like, body parts of the, uh, different, uh, human systems and whatnot. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this is the, uh, Merit Awards screen here. And then, also, uh, you move to the very bottom of the screen, this is Exit Program, so when you click on that, then this brings up, are you sure you wish to exit the program? Yes or no? Uh, but obviously I'm gonna press no here. And then, then this overview here, this is just the um, intro that you saw at the very beginning of the uh, video here. So basically giving an overview of the um, protocols of the uh, uh, program that they are testing, yeah, against like um, treating infections and whatnot. And then how you like uh, get transported into the human body to fight the microbes and stuff. So that's pretty much all it is. And um, here's system configuration, yeah, here you can like disable music and sound. Yeah, and also screen transitions and mission briefings. Yeah, I'll get to those in, well, you'll, you'll see what those are in a bit. And then for the music volume and sound volume, yeah, I have sound volume at the loudest, but music volume lower than that, just because, yeah, in my testings, yeah, even putting the music volume at loudest, yeah, it's very, very loud, so. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely have to reduce the music volume here. And this is definitely more comfortable to my ears, um, especially when I have my headphones on too. So yeah, that's why it is, it is, it is what it is. And then here is where uh, you can uh, put a save file. Yeah, when, for example, you want to take a break and you um, can like resume uh, where you were later on by just coming here and then loading your save file. So that's pretty much all that is. Welcome to Mission Control, Anthony. And then finally, the double doors here. Yeah, this is where you get each mission and everything. So um, yeah, basically the um, uh, briefings here. Yeah, you uh, the the Commodore T J Ridley. I think that's his name, yeah, if I got that correctly from the brief overview. Um, yeah, basically he gives you a quick overview of what, what you're going to get yourself into for each mission and everything. So it basically describes a patient that is some in some kind of like um, 
like injury or, or or illness or whatever. And then, yeah, basically he just tells you what you need to do. Yeah, which um, system you'll be entering and uh, what you'll be facing and whatnot. So that's the uh, 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 screen briefings. So anyway, um, I think that's pretty much all there is to say here. And then ship schematics and um, weapon schematics. Yeah, it just gives you an overview of the... The primary weapons on the Tim-19 Interceptor are antibody enhancers that use the patient's own defense mechanisms as a source of ammunition. Essentially, the enhancers collect antibodies from the surrounding plasma through collection vents in the underside of the vessel and amplify their natural germ-fighting abilities through an electrochemical process. These supercharged antibodies are then launched through the emitters on the front of the vessel. This process obviates the need for bulky, expendable loads of chemical weapons or surgical lasers which could potentially harm the patient. The ammunition source is virtually inexhaustible and is totally harmless to the patient while being highly lethal to the invading organisms attacking the body. These antibody enhancers come in three ranges, which are designated simply as light, medium, and heavy. Their official nomenclatures are BDM-16-2, BDM-24-2, and the BDM-43-2. They each have a different rate of fire and level of effectiveness. Currently, the TIM-19 Interceptor carries four internally mounted enhancers of the light and medium variety. The heavy enhancer is still in the final stages of testing, but is expected to come online soon. The enhancers draw their power from the TIM-19's internal power pack. Usually, the pilot will vary the pattern of weapon choice based on the type of target and the situational constraints. The Mark 46 binary torpedo is also in the final stages of testing. The torpedo launcher is to be externally mounted on the TIM-19 and will hold up to 40 Mark 46 torpedoes. These weapons contain two chemical agents which are kept in compartments divided by a thin glass-like membrane. These chemicals are harmless when kept separate, but when mixed together, the resulting chemical reaction forms an agent that is highly toxic to the invading organisms. This chemical is non-toxic to humans in the minute doses contained in the warheads. The Mark 46 torpedo is propelled magnetically, since conventional propulsion systems would leave harmful fuel byproducts in the patient's bloodstream. Another safety feature of the Mark 46 is its FFRC, Friend or Foe Recognition Computer, which is programmed with the DNA structure of the patient prior to insertion. When the torpedo impacts, it compares the DNA pattern of whatever it strikes to the patient's DNA. If the pattern is a match, the membrane separating the chemicals will not rupture, and an internal process reduces the chemicals to an inert state. The torpedo is then removed with the TIM-19 at the end of the mission. Yeah, so basically from what I understand, um, I think those do relate to the weapons that you have available while you're doing the arcade uh, playstyle. And um, yeah, it's just pretty much a quick overview of what they are. And um, yeah, uh, it's not really like much of interest yeah, or like worth remembering stuff. Just um, just know what you have available. And because I'm pretty sure it does relate to that. And then, anyway, there's also the ship schematics here. The backbone of the Might Force is the Tim-19 Interceptor, affectionately known by the pilots who fly them as Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim's hull is composed of an organic compound that is biochemically altered to match the patient's DNA pattern prior to insertion. This ensures that the body's own defenses, antibodies, don't attack the ship as another invader while inside the patient. This organic coating is closer to tissue than metal, so it could be said that Tiny Tim is alive in a loose sense of the word. The Tim-19 Interceptor's maneuvering system is entirely electromagnetic. There are no internal moving parts. The matter reduction field has the capacity to shrink an optic's size, but not its mass. So in effect, you get a microbe that weighs 3,214 massive weight is held in check using a slightly modified WRC-37 gravity resist generator, similar to the propulsion systems used for the Academy's ambulances. The TIM-19's maneuverability is not like an airplane or even a submarine. The inertial controls on the onboard computer regulate the electromagnetic field to keep the craft a safe distance from the surrounding tissue. Since the pilot cannot escape by flying away, he or she is monitored from the outside by a sophisticated scanner, roughly similar to the antiquated ultrasound processes 
used to see inside a patient's body during the late 20th century. When the pilot accomplishes the mission or is too damaged to continue, the ship and pilot are reduced yet again, almost to the subatomic level, and are extracted through the cell wall using controlled gravity, where they are returned to normal size once outside of the patient's body. The TIM-19's means of defense is an electromagnetic bowl projected over the front and sides of the vessel from two internal shield generators. These generators draw power from their own power pack so as not to deprive the weapons or maneuvering pods of energy during combat. This power arrangement has its disadvantages, namely that the shield power packs cannot generate as much power as the main plant. Thus, they are more susceptible to damage from the bioelectric bursts emitted by the attacking organisms. And quite honestly, I don't think I've ever listened to the weapon schematics or the ship schematics. Yeah, and I didn't realize how very long they are. So, <laughs> um, yeah, if, if, if you found those pretty boring, then yeah, I would agree with you. With you. I don't actually blame you there. Uh, I actually didn't really pay too much attention to what they were saying and whatnot. And especially since that, I just realized that the uh, it's probably a bit difficult to hear what they're saying too. Yeah, given the uh, music that was playing uh, during that time too. But yeah, um... The game has some of the most uh, amazing music tracks here too, and yeah, this was something I was definitely contemplating on sharing with the uh, Lemmings Forums Discord, but um, the only reason I haven't done so yet is because of the fact that um, I haven't been able to find like the FM uh, synth, synth um, versions of them, yeah, because the ones that are available for download, yeah, if you look them up, are um, uh, feature MIDI, so um, yeah, and they sound very, very different than what you hear in this game. So the only reason that uh, the differences in the sound is because of the way I have the configuration yeah, done when I installed the game. Yeah, I, se I selected FM here, so that's why the music sounds the way it does here. Yeah, and it's very, very different from the whipped uh, music tracks that you can find for download um, online. And um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the reason why I haven't shared the music tracks yet. But yeah, it does not have... The game does have pretty nice music, though. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I would really love to share it with them, just because the music's quite good. Yeah, but um, yeah, the way I'm hearing the music here, yeah, this is definitely the way I remember that. Yeah, when I was growing up. Yeah, not the uh, rip music tracks that you can download. Yeah, those um, sound uh, very, very different. Yeah, from what I'm hearing here and, and remembered. So yes, um, I think that's pretty much all I, um, there is to say here. Yeah, people before we dive into the actual missions. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into Let's Play now. So, let's begin. Welcome to the Academy. Through your course of study, you will learn the basics of human anatomy and test and improve your combat skills against various infections. All of our cadets are equipped with modern ships and state-of-the-art weapon technology. You will be fully prepared for any battle you encounter. For each mission you are assigned, you will need to review the body system so that you are fully prepared to go into combat. You will be assisted in locating the infection for your first few missions. After that, you will need to rely on your own deductive skills based on clues given in the patient review. To begin the mission, the reduction ray will shrink you and your ship to be injected into the body for combat. Good luck! You now have the basics needed to begin your first mission. While working on a car engine, a spray of grit from the engine has scratched the mechanic's cornea. A nasty bacteria infection has set in and the patient is experiencing discomfort and pain. The sclera looks red and irritated. The bacteria must be stopped before it can cause a loss of vision. For your first mission, you will be taken directly to the eye to test your battle skills against the bacteria and save the patient's vision. So yeah, that's the um, screen transitions that you saw. Yeah, that's the option that you saw in the system configuration in the main menu. And um, yeah, it basically just shows the shrink ray, uh, shrinking you to the size yeah, um, small enough to be inserted into the patient so that you can like um, um, be transported and also fight the infection. And then the mission briefings, yeah, that was the um, overview the, the Commodore was giving us yeah, about what we're about to get ourselves into. And so, yeah, that's the, uh, for the first mission here. And, yeah, and the music is actually a lot louder than I thought it would be. So, yeah, unfortunately, I think I had to reduce it a bit more. Yeah, I think that's a little better. 
But anyway, yeah, to bring up this menu here while you're in the arcade playstyle um, part, then you just press escape on your keyboard. Yeah, and this, it brings up this menu here. So yeah, everything is fine here now, so yeah, I could just go ahead and press OK. So yeah, here on your screen, you see these microbes that you need to fire and uh, eliminate. So the blue dots on your radar in the middle, yeah, that's what you want to uh, focus your attention on. Because those are the ones that attack the body. And if you get too far again, then, then they will disappear. And if you get too many of them, let too many of them do that, yeah, then you will eventually lose the mission. And it is indicated by this green bar here, which, is, which indicates the health of the patient. So if it gets too low, yeah, then eventually you fail the mission, and then you have to try again. So, th so the blue dots is what you want to fire on and destroy first. Yeah, and then the green dots, yeah, those are the ones that attack the ship. Yeah, those two you also want to shoot at and destroy. But at the same time, you also want to be careful with their attacks. Yeah, because eventually uh, they will, at some points, they, uh, they will shoot at you. And then you have to avoid their attacks. Now, depending on the microbe that you're fighting, and the type of attack they, they draw at you, yeah, uh, they do various amounts of damage. Yeah, this in particular does a somewhat of a high amount of damage. So you do want to be careful with this. And yeah, the um, uh, status of the ship is indicated by this blue bar here. So as you can see, yeah, I've already um, uh, gotten my shoots down yeah, to like almost the 50% uh, though. Yeah, and when that happens, it will turn uh, yellow. Shields so like that. 50%. And then eventually if you take too much damage, then you get into 25%, where the bar will turn red. And then you, you continue to take even more damage. Yeah, then eventually what will happen is that uh, your ship becomes damaged, and then uh, various parts of it get um, get damaged, and then um, eventually you start losing your weapons as well. Yeah, if you're not careful. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the idea here. You just shoot at every uh, back that you see here, both the blue dots and the green dots. Your defense of the body was perfect. The patient will be going home just as soon as the paperwork is done. Some things never change. I'm glad to see that you brought your ship back in one piece. If you ever find yourself signing repair budget for one of those babies, you'll know why. Welcome to Mission Control, Ensign. So yeah, essentially that's the reverse that happens. Yeah, when you can, when you complete each mission, yeah, the ray uh, returns you back to normal, and then uh, the computer gives you uh, a report depending on how well you did. So both on your, uh, both on the status of the ship and also uh, uh, how satisfactory your performance was. Yeah, with the patient and everything. And so yeah, that's pretty much the idea of every mission here. And then you continue uh, until you get through the end of the game. So if I go to the awards uh, merit screen here again, yeah, now you can see that this number one increased to number two. So essentially, once again, you can think of it as the level number. So we are essentially on level two now, or the second mission. So yeah, we pretty much do the exact same thing over and over until we finish the game. So let's go ahead and start the second mission now. The patient has been experiencing extreme vertigo or dizziness. He says he feels off balance and everything seems to be spinning. If he moves his head, even slightly, the symptoms get worse and are accompanied by extreme nausea. A closer examination has revealed a viral infection in the semicircular canals. The virus has caused an imbalance in the air pressure within the canals and damaged the tympanic membrane. The infection is quite painful and must be stopped before it spreads further. For your second mission, you will be taken directly to the air. Find the semicircular canals and stop the virus. All right, so now this time we face a different type of uh, blue enemy here, which are bats. Yeah, these are quite fast. Yeah, and they will disappear into the body very quickly. Yeah, if you don't destroy them. So because of that, they can be very difficult to destroy. And also, um, a different type of weapon is used against them. Yeah, we use these uh, brown starlight thingies. Yeah, because they're uh, pretty effective in being able to fan out and uh, hit them. Whereas if you use the green one, yeah, it, it is a bit harder to aim at them. Yeah, and it also, and also the weapon, the green ones are heavier as well, which means they use more energy to, um, to fire. 
Yeah, and that's indicated by the red bar here. That's how, that's the amount of energy that's used. Yeah, depending on the weapon you are using. So as you can see, the red bar doesn't go down as quickly. Yeah, with the uh, brown star weapon that we're using. Yeah, and I still need to mention how we switch between weapons here. So to switch between weapons, yeah, the brown star ones, yeah, is number one on your uh, keyboard. And then to switch to the green one, yeah, you press number two. Or you press two on your keyboard. So I'm gonna press two, and you would know which weapon is active by the uh, color of the um, um, of the box there. Yeah, blue indicates the the current weapon that that is active. So right now I have the brown star ones. And then yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to number two now. So so now you see that it's blue. So that's the weapon I'm using now. So as you can see, we are facing these uh, red crab-like creatures again. Lobster, scorpion, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you want to call them, but... <laughs> I, as far as I know though, they don't really like have any official names. So you just like call them as you will. Yeah, the only new one that we faced were the red bats. Um, they are pretty quick and yeah, they fired their red clouds at you. And I don't think we got a chance to see them attack us, so... Um, yeah, but later on we will. Yeah, in, in later missions. Yeah, those two do a lot of damage too. Yeah, the red clouds. Yeah, the, the red bats fire at you. Your protection of the patient was top notch. You stopped that creeping crud in its tracks. Good work. I see that you brought your ship home whole. It's good to know that some of my pilots know how to read a shield gauge. Thank you. That will be all. Welcome to Mission Control, Ensign. So, yeah, now you see it's number three. So we're on the third mission slash third level now. So, yeah, again, we do the same thing. An acute viral infection has invaded the nasal cavity and is causing breathing difficulties. For your mission, you will be taken directly to the sensory system. Locate the nasal cavity and stop the infection. So, after the first two levels uh, slash missions where we just simply, uh, Fight the microbes. Yeah, starting with the third mission, you start answering questions. Yeah, before you um, get into the actual missions themselves. So, because we are on the highest difficulty here, yeah, we have to answer three questions correctly. So, which cells detect odor? So, olfactory cells. Yeah, I'm pretty certain. Yep. So, instructions. Match up the terms on the left with the definitions on the right by clicking on the term, and then on the matching definition. Click on accept choices when you are ready. Um, yeah, it's been quite a while since I've, um, uh, knew the definitions of these, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to look this up. So, if you need some help here, then you can press access computer. No. And, uh, pretty much, um, every time you do this part, yeah, they already take you to the relevant body part for you, where you can look up information. So, yeah, pretty much the terms that we need to match here, they're, they're all, um, they're all um, identified here. Hard palette. So hard palette is here. And then the meatus. Or meatus, sorry. Yeah, I am not a medical doctor or anything, so <laughs> please excuse me if I butcher any of these uh, body parts uh, pronunciations. Um, was pharynx one of them? Pharynx. Um, no, Pharynx was not one of them. So we have cartilage on Conche. Nose. Conky. Or Conky. Um, let's see. This is hard palette. Um, curved ledges. Was the con key, I think. Yeah, I hope I got these correct. I did. Awesome. So, pretty much the only time you need to match definitions and everything, that's when you do at least the intermediate level for the quizzes. Yeah, and you just do the beginner. Yeah, then far, as far as I understand, yeah, you just answer questions that are multiple choices. Yeah, but you do not match uh, definitions yeah, with the terms. 
Um, so this is the final question that we need to answer. But if we answer incorrectly, then we have to do all three questions again. Yeah, but they, they tend to be different questions asked. Yeah, not necessarily the same ones. Which, what helps filter and motion the air you breathe? Mucous membrane, isn't it? Yep, awesome. Alright, so we're back to these crap like creatures again. So, as far as I understand the um, difficulty of the uh, arcade style, it simply increases the number of enemies that you need to fight. Yeah, so as you can see, the green one uses way more. Um, it's heavier, so therefore, um, it uses way more energy to fire. And if it's depleted, then you have to take a break from time to time before you can fire again. So you want to be careful how much you fire. Yeah, don't worry. These aren't these aren't the only types of enemies that you fight. Yeah, there are different ones too, such as the bats that you saw in the previous mission. But yeah, essentially, uh, higher difficulty lows for the arcade style um, place um, just increases the number of enemies. It doesn't really like, increase their power, I think. Yeah, their strength remains the same. Yeah, just the number of enemies that you do shoot and kill increases. And also, um, the number of shots that it takes to kill them increases as well, I think, for some of them. That was a textbook example of body defense that you put on in there. We'll refer to your gun camera footage in training sessions next week. Good job. Your ship is in top form. I'm glad to see that you know the vessel's limitations. Carry on. Welcome to Mission Control, Ensign. So as you just saw in that mission, yet yeah, it's essentially we essentially fought the same crap like creature again, except that this time it, they were like gray slash silver rather than red. So pretty much they, they act the same. Uh, the only difference here is that the gray ones have to get pretty close before they fire at you, while the red ones can shoot from much farther away. Yeah, and they tend to be slower as well than the uh, gray ones. So uh, as you um, as we go through the um, uh, let's play, um, you'll essentially see that most of these have like two variants. Yeah, one tends to be a red color, the other one tends to be a gray slash silver. Um, but not always though. Yeah, but most of the time there are like two different variations of the same. Yeah, microbe. Yeah, the only difference being is uh, how far they are from the screen before they fire you, and how fast they are. Yeah, and also, um, uh, in some cases, um, some of them are tougher to kill. Yeah, meaning they take more shots. So anyway, while forward. traveling through South America, the patient was bitten by a mosquito carrying the yellow fever virus. The virus attacks the liver, causing nausea and abdominal pain. You will be taken directly to the digestive system to learn how the system works and to stop the virus before complete liver failure occurs. Alright, so here we are in the digestive system now, rather than the sensory, uh, where we were before. Ah, yes, yeah, so we have to match terms again. Um, well, I definitely know bio is the liquid. Yeah, that I know for sure. Um... Let's see, cow bladder. That wouldn't be just small pear shaped organ, isn't it? Liver. Uh, I gotta make sure here. Yeah, and pointers on, you can turn them on so that you can see what is what in the picture. Gallbladder. Yeah, so there's a small pear shaped organ, okay. Common bile duct. Tube that carries gallbladder, okay. Uh, here, 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 and here. What is the name of the tube that carries Bob? Oh, we just did that one. Got Bob, right? Yep.
Alright, so this one's all about bats here. So yeah, the red one's attacking with those red clouds that you saw. And essentially, if they get too close to the screen, then essentially they, they crash into it. And causing uh, damage to the ship. Um, a lot of times, it's extremely rare for them to like turn back and not crash into the ship. It does happen, but it's extremely rare. Yeah, I, I haven't encountered it too much. But, and so, uh, just know that it happens, but uh, don't expect it to. Shields at 50%. Shields yeah, like that. at 25%. Yeah, he just crashes into your ship and disappears. So, yeah. Again, do not expect him to, like, turn around. Essentially, for the attacks, yeah. Essentially, you just need to be away from it. Yeah, and not in his presence in order to not be damaged by the attacks. So, yeah. There's, there's definitely some dodging that's involved. But occasionally, though, yeah, on the higher difficulties, I like to get silly and, like, get damaged on purpose. Just to, like, add some fun to, to the game and whatnot. And possibly to some people's amusements. <laughs> and essentially, these brown star-shaped weapons, yeah, they're essentially only effective for the bats. Yeah, all other creatures, you can use the green ones. At least for the ones that you have available for the time being. The patient is feeling 100% better thanks to you. You did a perfect job safeguarding the body in there. Other than standard post-flight maintenance, your ship looks okay. Those things are the Academy's biggest capital asset. I'm glad to see that you appreciate that. For outstanding efforts in the pursuit of your duty, the Academy is proud to award you the Good Samaritan Medal. Congratulations, Ensign. Well done. Yeah, so I guess after four missions, this is like the earliest you can get a medal. And then, you know, fireworks display to celebrate. <laughs> so yeah, so it brings you to the screen, and as you can see, we got the Good Samaritan medal here. Again, they didn't really impact gameplay in any way, other than just being a fancy display of, oh yeah, look, you got a medal for being really good at like fighting infections and whatnot. So yeah, and as you can see, we are currently on the fifth level now. Welcome to Mission Control, Ensign. And yeah, because the um, uh, screen transitions are the same every time, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and disable them now. Yeah, the one where they shrink you with the shrink ray, and then return you back to normal after you are done. Um, yeah, that's the same every time, so that's not changing. So therefore, I'm just going to go ahead and disable that. But mission briefings, yeah, I think I'll just keep them on. Just because they're different every time. The patient has been complaining of an earache and sore throat. A closer examination has revealed an infection in the auditory canal, which has spread to the throat and the lymph nodes in that area, which have become swollen and painful. A textbook case of cervical adenitis. The infection must be stopped before it spreads any further. Your mission is to find the system that contains the auditory canal and stop the infection before it spreads. Alright, so here we are at the lymphatic system now. What is the core of a lymph node called? Well, would that be the cortex? Lymph node. Cortex. Capsule. Medulla. No, it's Medulla. So, I was wrong that time. Please identify this. Um, they're probably veins, but I have no idea. Lymph node. Yeah, it's just veins. Yeah, as I expected. Just the blue color. Yeah, was what uh, tipped, tipped me off to that yeah, it must be veins. Um, 
often has been filtered, it enters the veins and what region of the body. Lymph node. Veins. Um. Apparent vessel. Oh, I don't know why I did that. Enters the veins of what region of the body? Oh, this is one Lymph of the ones that node. doesn't really tell you the answer, does it? Lymphocyte. Artery. Efferent vessel. Efferent vessel. Capsule Cortex Yeah, it doesn't really tell us the answer here, so... <laughs> I wouldn't know. Nope, that was wrong, okay. Lymphobosms? Yeah. <laughs> I'm again, I'm not a medical person, so outer lining. Um, is that the Lymph cortex? Node. I don't remember. Cortex, yeah, it's the cortex. Alrighty, now they introduce these broccoli like creatures. <laughs> And here, yeah, there are also the gray bats. Yeah, which take uh, two hits to destroy rather than one. And they fire these green balls at you. And they fire very, very often. So it can be very, very difficult to dodge them. Except, yeah, it used the uh, green weapons. Yeah, then you can destroy them with one hit. But it tends to be much harder to aim at them if you use that. So generally, the brown star ones are the best for the bats. So yeah, they can attack the ship from very far away, and they attack very, very frequently. Much more than the red, red bats. But, uh, the green balls are just as damaging as the red clouds, though. So yeah, just switching between weapons. time, depending on what we're fighting here. Yeah, gotta love the music, yeah. Some pretty, pretty good ace ones, some very memorable ones. Alright, so that wasn't the only area that we go to for this mission. Yeah, when you get this me message, yeah, then that means there is more. So, it says, good work. You have confirmation to proceed to the next mission mission, obje obje mission objective. Which I guess makes sense, considering that we weren't even in the, um, um, in the lymphatic system there. Yeah, instead we were in the sensory. Yeah, and then another one that attacks the body, he's like, coming like guys with horns. Yeah, they are one of the toughest enemies to destroy, because they tend to take a lot of hits before you can kill them. Yeah, and this is just one variant of them. Yeah, there's also the green ones too. Yeah, those, I like to say, have a lot of armor. Yeah, so they are very, very difficult to destroy. Yeah, we don't see them here, but we will see them in later missions. Yeah, those green helmet-like guys. And they are kind of unique in that, yeah, yeah, they, they are only ones that attack the body. Yeah, there aren't those helmet guys that attack the ship at all. Alrighty, and then, 
Yeah, so pretty much the mission is over whenever you get this message. Yeah, that we've been getting in the previous four. The patient is feeling 100% better thanks to you. You did a perfect job safeguarding the body in there. The maintenance chief has given your ship a clean bill of health. I'm glad to see you're watching those shields. Welcome to Mission Control, Ensign. The patient has been complaining of a crushing pain in his chest. The pain is accompanied by a fever, which indicates an infection. A closer examination reveals that a virus has attacked the pericardium, the membranous tissue sac that encloses the heart. If the virus is not stopped, permanent damage to the heart could occur. You will need to go to the heart to test your battle skills against the virus. Yeah, so now the circulatory system. The lining of the heart. Interior of heart. And the lining of the heart, huh? Atrium. Pericardium. Endocardium. And <laughs> probably look at the wrong parts too. Aorta. Pulmonary trunk. Pulmonary semilunar valve. Aortic semilunar valve. Vena cava. Atrium. Ventricle. Pulmonary veins. Endocardium. Um. We want the lining of the interiors. Yeah, I guess the endocardium. How many ventricles are in a human heart? Oh, no, that one I should know, but Interior I do not. Heart. Or at least I don't remember. So, only two? Okay, yeah. And then atria. Interior of heart. Atrium. Uh, seems like there's only two here as well. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and then there's these brown crab-like creatures. And then these guys, yeah, they're like claws that scratch at you and they get too close to you. Yeah, very, very tough to destroy. And yeah, it looks like they're combining two different types of enemies here. The claw guys and also the those crab lobster like creatures. Yeah, so those are the ones that can attack very far away. These red crab like guys. But the call guys, they don't attack you until they get pretty close. Yeah, and they draw like mine like bombs at you, which do a lot of damage. Yeah, if you get hit by them. So I think they're the most powerful enemy that we are facing yet. Yeah, even stronger than, than these crap like guys. Yeah, both in in the amount it takes to destroy them and also in their firepower. Yeah, two damage to ship. Shields at fifty percent. So, you would notice that we have three choices of weapons here. However, the third one, which is black, yeah, we don't have that available yet. Yeah, we don't get that until, like, a bit halfway through the game. So, after the 30th mission. Sometime after the 30th one. Your defense of the body was perfect. The patient will be going home just as soon as the paperwork is done. Some things never change. I'm glad to see that you brought your ship back in one piece. If you ever find yourself signing repair budget for one of those babies, you'll know why. Welcome to Mission Control, Ensign. Alrighty, um, I think right now is a pretty good time to make a cut here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save here.
Welcome to Mission Control, Anson. So yeah, with the first six missions, I uh, hope this is enough to uh, provide you a quick overview of what the game is like. So yeah, we're essentially just going to keep on going until we reach the end. So it's still quite a while, but uh, we'll eventually we'll make it. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys all next time for the next video.